Hello and welcome to our next video about operational amplifiers. Okay, operational amplifiers are often used as amplifier. Operational amplifier. What is an operational amplifier? An operational amplifier is an electronic amplifier. I will start with the symbol because they come in a various of different cases and so on. They can look really different. So I'll explain it with the help of the symbol. The symbol of the operational amplifier is a triangle. Okay. Oper am operational amplifier does have two connections. One connection, there is plus U, yeah. call it UB, yeah. that's the supply voltage, yeah. and minus UB. So we do, have, we do have B directional supply voltage, plus minus 15 volts or whatever, something like this, yeah. plus minus 20 volts. Plus minus, plus minus volts. Okay, plus minus is already the same. Is a good hint, yeah, because we do have two inputs. We have two inputs in our amplifier and one output. Here is the output. Yeah. Here is the positive input, and here is the negative input. What does this mean? Okay, it's ground level. Here we got the output. And here between positive and negative, we got a differential voltage, UD, differential voltage. Of course, we got here, we got here a positive voltage, UP, and we got here negative voltage, UN. And between there is the differential voltage. Okay. And the only the only thing which should be amplified by the amplifier is this differential voltage. Okay. So the output is K times UD. If UD is negative, the output will get negative. So there's an application factor, and only this differential voltage is amplified and presented at the output. In theory, in theory, it looks like it looks like this. That's output value. Here we have the differential value. Here we have plus UB. Here we have minus UB. Supply. And then we do have a straight line. That would be perfect if it is straight. Depending on you, if UD is zero, output is zero. If UD is something, output is something. This is the normal operation mode here. So in here we do have here we do have our normal operation. Aussteuerbereich in German, normal operation. The steepness here is, of course, depending on the K factor. Okay? If the K is high, steepness is high. If K is low, steepness is not that low. Here, we cannot get beyond UB. Yeah? So, we will go and here we are clipping. Here we are in overload. Yeah? This here 
and this here is overload. Übersteuert. Overload area. Okay. In reality, we are going to stay a little bit below UB. Yeah? In, in, in real OPFAS, in real operational amplifiers, we will stay a little bit below here because simply there are internal losses. Yeah? This is how it looks like. Okay. This is how it looks like. That's what an operational amplifier is basically doing. If UD is zero, there might be the case that UP and UN are zero, uh, then it's clear UD is zero. Or UP and UN are, let's say, 100 volts. Uh, then UD is still zero. And in an ideal world, this would cause no output. Uh, this would, if, if this UD is zero, regardless of the value of UP and UN, if they are 10 volts, both 10 volts or 5 volts or 100 volts or whatever, yeah, in theory it would be ideal if the output is zero. Yeah. In reality, an uh, operational amplifier has something like a common mode rejection, CMR. Yeah. Common mode. Read. Rejection, CMR. This means if there are common mode voltages, so the same voltage on both inputs, there is a tiny bit of an output. This means not 100% of the common mode is rejected, but less. And this common mode rejection, they are usually given, usually this common mode rejection is a factor. They say, okay, CMR, CMR is 10,000. This means differential, differential values, differential voltages are amplified 10,000 times more than common mode voltages. Okay. 10,000 times more. This means if I do have a differential voltage, let's say of one, let's make an example. Example, I have a UD of one millivolt. Yeah. UD is one millivolt, gives a certain output. Here we are somewhere, gives a certain output. Okay. CMR 10,000 means the common modes yeah, to reach the same output must be 10,000 times higher. So this means UP equals UN equals 10,000 multiplied mon millivolt, and this is 10 volts. Yeah. 1,000 and milli are away, 10 times 1 volt, 10 volts. Okay. This means if we have a differential, if we have a CMR of 10,000, a differential voltage of 1 millivolt produces the same output as a common mode voltage on both inputs of 10 volts. Okay. Usually, the CMR is not given as factor. Yeah, the CMR is given as, as logarithmic, logarithmic values in decibel. Yeah. And the CMR in decibel is calculated 20 times logarithm by the base of 10 and CMR. In this case, yeah, logarithm of 10, by the base of 10 of 10,000 is 1, 2, 3, 4. Yeah, 4. So this means 20 times 4 and this is 80 ah, decibel. Of course, the unit, eins the unit. 80 decibel. 80 decibel means CMR of 10,000. You can type it in your calculator. 10,000 and press the lock button, then you reach 4.
10 by raised by the power of 4 is 10,000, of course. Yeah, That's what the logarithm is. The reverse function of an exponential function. Okay, so that's common mode rejection. So, we now know, in ideal world, only the differential voltage will be amplified with a factor k. Yeah? In the real world, also common mode voltages will be amplified, by, but by a number less, by a factor less. Yeah? This factor is called common mode rejection, or common mode rejection ratio. Sometimes you read CM rr common mode common mode rejection and the last r means ratio ratio okay. it's the same thing often given in decibel this this here is how you come from decibel let's say 80 decibel yeah divided by 20 is 4 10 raised by the power of 4 is 10000 Easy. Decibel value. Now let's come to possible circuits with this operational amplifier. These are also theoretical up to now. I will tell you afterwards why they are not working proper. Okay? So let's have the idea that we do the following. Plus, minus, this here we connect to ground, this here we connect to our input voltage, and here we have the output voltage. Okay. This is U in, and this is U out. And this U out is the differential voltage, since this is zero, is exactly UI. Yeah. So we have k times u i. This is the so-called non-inverting mode. Non-inverting mode. Non-inverting mode. Then we of course have the inverting mode. It pretty much looks the same. But this time I, need, I have I will use the minus sign on the upper side. Yeah. We'll connect the plus side to the ground. Then we have the input voltage and the output voltage. And this time the input voltage, the differential voltage, is plus minus the input voltage. So this is minus UI. So we have minus k k multiplied by u i yeah? inverting mode clear i hope yeah? clear i hope then we do have the differential mode this is a very common mode we have plus we have minus we have here u out we have a UP and a UI. So we have pretty much everything. We do have a positive voltage. We do have a negative voltage. And we have the output. And this is nothing more than K UP minus UI, uh, UN. Clear. Huh? That's exactly the base of the operational amplifier. I'm always talking about the operation mode and not the clipping or not the overload mode. Okay. Then the last mode which we can think of, which we can think of, is the common mode. Common mode. It would look like this. Plus minus output voltage and here the input voltage I put on both inputs. Okay. UI, UO, and since I do not have any differential voltage, any differential voltage, this UO would be zero volts always. Okay. 
depending on the common mode rejection ratio, of course, but let's say we have a high quality uh, operational amplifier, we have high, high, high common mode rejection ratio, so we will get out pretty nothing. These are the modes we could think of. Okay. Now I tell you, up to now everything looks, I hope, looks logic to you. Okay. Now I tell you some things about the operational amplifier which would be ideal. Okay. I tell you now, the output, here you can we here we could think of I will draw this here we could think of a internal internal source yeah, internal voltage source which is producing this output voltage here we have an output resistor and ideal RO is zero ohm logic yeah an ideal voltage source has an internal resistance of zero ohm. It's the same, yeah? Ideal. Here we could think of we do have an input resistance, yeah? Ri, yeah? And this Ri, ideal Ri, is infinity ohm. This is also not surprising i guess yeah the input the the input of an amplifier if the input voltage then there is no current running in yeah so this means this this thing here is working without power without draining power from the source yeah from the source of the voltages yeah? it would be ideal yeah both things are pretty well with real with real with real operational amplifiers, both things are pretty well met. Yeah? They have a very high input voltage, they have very low output volt, uh, vol very high input resistance, of course, not voltage. They have very low output, output uh, resistance. Yeah? And now, what also would be ideal is that UT, the frequency of UT, Does not matter. This means, regardless of which, how fast this UT is changing, the output will follow. This is not very good, Matt. So usually we do have a lower limiting frequency and an upper yeah, limiting frequency. Yeah, untere Grenzfrequenz, obere Grenzfrequenz. Yeah. This omega is the frequency. Yeah. Here we have to take care that we are within the range. Yeah. And now I tell you something which is really strange. EDL K is unlimited. What does it mean unlimited? Unlimited means that we are immediately go from one overload area to the next overload area. If the differential voltage is changing, we immediately do something on the output and very brutal. Okay? With high, high, high amplification. And in reality, these amplification ratios here on, on operational amplifiers are really, really high. Yeah? They are not, they are high. Yeah? Of course, not infinite, but they are pretty high. So this is very, very steep, and we only have. A small band of the differential voltage where we change the output voltage. So the output voltage will basically uh, without external things, the output voltage would basically jump between the minus and plus UB, depending on the input. How is the thing even usable? How is the thing even usable? It's simple, it's not that simple, but I show you, know, you now one possibility, yeah? one possibility, put it on here, yeah? and I tell you how it is working. I 
I will use the non-inverting approach. Up to now everything is fine. We have our output voltage. Okay. And now I make some tweaks. Here I put in a resistor, a one. This is my input voltage. Okay. Here I also put in a resistor. R2. Okay. And now the big joke or the big trick is that the differential voltage here yeah, is zero volt because we know whenever there is something in there on the output there is something happening it will increase or decrease depending on the size and, and, and sign of this imp so I can assume here is zero volts between yeah? my operational amplifier will take care that between here we have zero volts this means if we have here zero volts and here zero volts, here we do have the same voltage drop from this point to this point and from this point to this point. So we have here UI, the same voltage, the same, the same voltage. Okay. And here we have a current rushing in. I. And now let's how do we calculate this current? This I, Ohm's law, UI divided by R1. Okay? I know, no, here this I is running out, of course. Here we have zero ampere because the input voltage, the input resistance is very high, so there will nothing, nothing go in. Yeah. So my stream of, of, of charges, my current, cannot leave here at this point. Yeah. It must leave here. So there is also I. Okay. This means I have here a voltage U2. And this voltage U2 is I multiplied by R2, which is UI divided by R1 multiplied by R2. This is UI R2 divided by R1. Okay? This is this voltage here. And now let's have a look on that loop let's start in this direction yeah. so we have the mesh one on my mesh we have zero volts yeah minus u0 minus u2 is and then I'm here zero volt. Yeah, this means the output voltage is minus U2. This means the output voltage is is UI multiplied by minus R2 by R1. And here we have now a factor. This is the amplification factor G. What? I don't know. I don't want to name it K. K is the usual one, but K we already had for the for the operation amplifier. This is some factor. And you see, this factor by which the output is amplified from the input is purely defined by those resistors. Great, isn't it? So Regardless of the amplification factor, as soon as the amplification factor of the OP4, of the operational uh, amplifier, 
is big enough and all the other ideal stuff is met pretty well, I'm only depending on the resistors. Yeah? And suddenly I can just change one resistor and my amplification radius, radi ratio is changing. Yeah? This is one possibility. This is one possibility of, of uh, operational amplifiers. It's not really working because since this is now negative, I also have if we have a positive thing here and here. I, thought, I think it doesn't really matter. Okay, so that's operational amplifiers. They are often used in in measurement amplifiers. They are, they are used pretty pretty often. Yeah? Like I said, one thing we have not covered up to now, these are these frequency, these frequency things. Yeah? Let's have a short look on this frequency. What does it mean if you see something like this? Let's say this is the signal. This is the signal. This I want to have amplified, or this is the ideal output signal, let's say. You, you would expect this signal as an output. If you end up in a situation yeah, where the real output does not look that way, but starts here gentle, And coming in here, and also the the down step doing the same. If it looks like this, if it looks like a little bit, it sanded off the edges here, the, the, these beginning edges. It might also look like this, a little bit steeper, but it always looks like it's sanding off the edges of the steep things. Yeah. This is an indication that we are above we are above the upper limiting frequency. Okay? If you look these steep things here, yeah, there is a high frequency involved. Yeah? Steep things do mean high frequency. Yeah? Because if you think of a frequency, then the steeper it is, yeah, the more the, the shorter the, the period needs to be. So this means steep things do contain high frequencies, let's say. And if those steep things, those steep things are not transferred very well anymore, yeah, it looks a little bit, bit like a PT1 thing, jump answers, always jump answers of a PT1. Like I said, this is one possibility that we are far above, yeah, and this is one possibility, then we are not that far above the upper limiting frequency. Yeah. If you see something like this, you know mm, the signal is too too fast for me. I cannot follow. In extreme cases, it only looks like this. This is very extreme. Nothing, nothing of the steep edges is left. Yeah? This means frequency too high. However, there are also cases if the frequency is too low. Yeah? If the frequency is too low, you might end up in a situation like this, that you see here peaks. And then this will decrease. In this situation where nothing is changing, it will decrease. And then this jump you will see in its full bright, and then it will decrease again. 
So here, what is here filtered out is not the peaks, is not the steep things, it's the flat things. Yeah? The steep things are still there, and the flat things, the flat things are out, are fading out. Yeah? Then you end up something like this. Yeah? This means frequency to low. This means for my used amplifi amplifier, this frequency I see is too low. In extreme cases, I also show you extreme cases, but this time maybe in another color. Red, let's make it red. Yeah. Extreme case, go up. And then, go to zero. And then, this is again transferred in f its full bright. Go to zero. This would be far. Far above, let's say. But these peaks, if you see such peaks, you know frequency is too low. That's it for our operational amplifier. Like I said, often used. There are calculations, uh, calculation things on it. There are things where we can use operational amplifiers in analog digital converters and so on. Uh, you will hear about analog uh, operational amplifiers in, in electrotechnic as well. Uh, yeah, this is the basis. Yeah? Not to go into details, yeah? not to go, not to talk about. There are a bunch of such, there are a bunch of such circuits yeah? that do, do all different stuffs. Uh, but you should know that uh, basic functionality of this operational amplifier. Yeah, with the hope that I have transported this a little bit at least, that you know now better what an operational amplifier is and does, I come to the end of this video. Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.